everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris How you doing? You're right. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Can you see me properly? I can see you very clearly. Can you see me? Okay. Let me turn this light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, a long time, long time. I know, I know, I know. It's been a while. Beard gang. Man, <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. <laughs> I want to get Same into gang. light gang, I'm work so, gang. The roots. I want to. Yeah, give you a good comb and a brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, give me the dreads and everything. Yeah, man, join the join the dread crew. Join the dread. Spain on jeans, DJ. My G, Chris. Ah, right, cool, cool. How you been anyway? I've been all right. You know, busy, very busy, trying to um, stay level headed, given lockdown and a global pandemic and work mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I'm trying to just maintain balance and, and inner peace. So how did you deal with lockdown and all that? The quarantine you know, and all that? When it you first know happened? What? I have to be honest, like there were ups and there were downs. Like the ups were like bliss. Just I was going for, for walks and going to the park and exercising. And then other days I was just like, ah, oh, the news. And yeah, just ups and downs, ups and downs. I tried to keep myself busy with just finding things to do, like clearing out the house. And yeah, how about you? How did you find it? Um, I was still working. They classed me as key yeah. worker. Um, but when I work, we weren't working as much at the time. So there was a lot of like um, times where when I was at home, I was, one second, I was, um, yeah, finding things to do. And then I stumbled across well, the guys helped me stumble across doing this live. Yeah. And then the live was, I think I was just going to just do like one or two or four lives and leave it at that. And then that just ended up being a constant thing. Yeah, it's so, good. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so, funny you know. because um, basketball is an interesting area for me. Like, I, yeah. I think I was supposed to be like an athlete. <laughs> and yeah. it just never <laughs> happened. It never, yeah. ever happened. Oh, never happened. Have you not thought about doing it? Did you ever try it or anything? Do you know what? In school, I used to play netball um, mm -hmm. and I played a bit of basketball, but I was always goalkeeper. Um, I'm six foot two for, for those who are yeah. listening. I'm very tall. So people always ask like, oh, do you play basketball? Like, And I'm like, nah, it just never happened. I fell off. But um, I, I like that you tell your actual height. You know when some girls want to be, want to, Tell everyone they're five foot eleven when they're blatantly six foot three or something. I can't oh, say so you're six foot two, man. No, I'm five eleven. Don't but, like six foot. And you know what? You got the five, the short women that lie about their height and say they're taller. So I just say I'm, I'm six. Listen, foot two. I just say straight. You, you, I'm five ten. If a girl's tall and she don't and she's taller than me, I tell her straight I'm five ten. If you don't like me, then I can't help you. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. It is but what yeah, it is, man. six foot two. I think I was supposed to be a basketball player, or maybe I was in a previous life. But um, there's been a couple of, like, friends, male friends that I've played one-on-one -on -one hoops with a few times over the years who have tried to be like, oh, I play, I'm going to I'm gonna win. And I'd be like, okay, let's let's do one-on-one. -on -one. And I would yeah. always win. And I'm like, I don't even play ball. So, oh, yeah, I feel like damn. I like to get competitive, even though I don't play, just, just for the fun of it. Do you know any famous athletes? Um, you know much of them? Mm, no. Like, <laughs> Not really. I don't really. I don't actually follow basketball too tough. Um, right. It's not the work that I do at the moment. Like this is going back years in terms of when yeah. I used to play sport. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Good. So let people know, man. Where did you grow up? London, South London, um, sunny South. Yeah, actually. So for those who don't know, me and Chris go way back, don't we? Way, way, way back. Way, way back. back. Chris is my boy. He's my G. Like, oh, it's so nice to see you. But yeah, South London, sunny South, um, born and bred. Born and bred from South. So, yeah. Nice, nice. So, 
this is what I want to know as well. So when did you start getting into speaking about mental health and when did you get into what is it that got you into being a self-care and self-love advocate? Good question. Really good question, actually. So um, I before I, I went into mental health work, I used to teach. I used to be a maths teacher in, in secondary schools. Um, I know <laughs> that's another story, but I did that for about eight or nine years and it got to a point where I burnt out. I had to just stop. Um, I was exhausted. I gave so much to the education system and then dealing with my own personal things, the workload, the workplace politics. And so I had to just leave the education system completely and just focus on, on my own self-care. I had to kind of, I went on a recovery journey because I burnt out. Um, and so on that journey, I, I kind of traveled and I went on a, a, a travel to Africa. I went to visit the motherland because I wanted to connect with our heritage, our deeper heritage and get to know self a bit more. And um, I met someone who, 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 who delivers training in mental health. And so I was telling her a bit about my background. And she said, you, you, you might be really good at this. I think you should explore it. So that was almost two years ago almost two years ago so I was looking for a new venture anyway and it just kind of came to me on that journey and so it's been just over a year just over a year maybe about 15 months now that I've been a, a mental health first day trainer so I train people how to spot the signs of poor mental health and so I kind of tap into my own uh, experiences as well as kind of experiences with other people who have struggled with their mental health to really add um, flavor to the training so yeah, really powerful, okay. powerful course. So that's how you got into it. All right, and then what what is it that made you, we well, probably think you might have answered it, but what is it that made you fall in love with wanting to pursue this as a career in some kind of way and pursue this as to, to be part of your life? I think because of, when I when I experienced burnout, when I my mental health was at, at its worst, I found that, people around me in the workplace my friends not all but many friends and family they, they just didn't know how to respond to my challenges um they didn't understand what was going on or just didn't know how to say the right thing and so when I became when I learned about this training and, and experienced the training and I thought wow like I can relate to all of this. This means it, it meant something to me. So I'm not just doing this because it's a job. I'm doing it because I get it. I've been in the shoes of the person who doesn't know how, who hasn't had the su appropriate support. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming from a place yeah. of, so through my own healing, I can kind of add to the training because I've, I've, I'm coming out the other end. That's dope. That's dope. I like that. I like that. I get that as well. Nick, hey, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's, what's up, Nick? Um, so we're going to say, um, so talk us through your journey, man. You know, like when you discovered it, so you said you went to Africa now. Um, how did that, how, how did that whole experience go? Listen, I went to Ghana, um, Accra, and Ghana is magical, honestly. Like, it was just a really magical experience, Um so many things happened. I learned so much about myself and my culture, um, my history. Like we, we did loads. We did a lot. We just we went to like a wood uh, crafting store and and like really got into some wood crafting. We visited like some beautiful beaches. We went to a few museums, ate local food. We were amongst the locals. It was just a real experience a real African eye-opening experience and I think what we all often see of Africa and how it's depicted is often a negative so it was really nice to see it for myself and I fell in love yeah um and I, it was a very it was a healing experience as well very healing experience how was that healing experience how was it that moment when you felt healed at that moment like do you know what I can remember specifically? There was when we went to we went to a beach and I went exploring. It was a really it was a really quiet beach. It was just us there. There's like ten of us, um, and I went and sat on these rocks on the coast so I could hit the the waves were crashing on the rocks, and I sat there in just complete silence in solitude. And the the breeze, the wind, the sea breeze was blowing on my face, and I felt it felt like my ancestors were just blessing me with 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 energy and, and and healing like that was what I, I recall the most like significant um part of that journey 
definitely. I think, yeah, that's definitely, I definitely need to go there myself, somewhere yeah. in Africa. Just to, you know, but I did learn some healing hair as well. I think there's certain things that when I, went, when I went through my mental health, it was my uncle that helped me. So he just helped me with certain things. He just taught me about energy. And you know, little things like that, you don't think energy was is part of why you're getting sick. You know, it's mad. Like when he started breaking it down, why he moves away a certain way. And then when I started realizing, I was like, wait a minute, this guy's making sense, man. Like stress can do so much to you, can do much to your organs. Yeah. To your mind, not just your mind, your organs. How, how, like, I have eczema. It stressed that like, my eczema got real bad. And yeah, man, you just think, geez, like, you yeah. Can't understand how important energy is. Stress is closely linked to poor mental health or good mental health. So if we're not managing our stress levels, then we can start to see problems developing. And so, oh. yeah, it, it really does begin with with managing stress. Nice, nice. So what is your, so like with mental health, what is your understanding of it? Like, um, you? We all have mental health. All of us have mental health. Um, there's a lot of stigma around the word mental. Um, you know, mental is another word for mind. We all have a mind and we all have mind health. Um, in yeah. this way that we have physical health. Um, People so, think mental is like crazy. Yeah. Not... Yeah, there's stigma attached to the word mental and that people automatically often assume that it's a bad thing. But we all have mental health and our, our mental health is fluid. So it's always moving. So it can be good one day, bad the next day, but it's it's a matter of monitoring how you're feeling through periods of time to make sure you're okay. But we all have mental health in the same way that we have physical health and it's about maintaining both of them, making sure they're both in sync. Definitely, definitely. I think with mental health as well, it's deceiving from my experiences from where I work is um, sometimes you can't even you can't even see it physically sometimes mental health yeah. can creep up you you might look at someone and you might think they are so fine they're yeah. all right but they could be going through the most deeply and stuff i think that's what was happening with me yeah. once I was like I, was, I still was smiling with everyone but no one knew what i was going through because i had that I had that, that one i had that pride of don't want to look vulnerable so yeah it it's that yeah, it's 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 like a an iceberg so we mm -hmm. often only see the tip but the signs are often there. So even though it's invisible to an extent, we can see mental health um, through. Everything, everything, everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything, everything Chris. Everything, everything Chris. Uh.